Hi, welcome back to Buildbox Academy. Today, we're gonna to create a prototype of a game using the rotate node. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project. We're gonna dive straight into the 3D world. And this uh, is gonna be our little controller object that we'll, uh, we're gonna apply the rotate um, node to. So let's get started. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller just so we can see what we're doing. Uh, we're gonna get rid of the ground. Let's go straight into the cube. Let's grab the rotate node, or the touch rotate node rather, and we'll hook that up and let's have a look and see what it does. Ooh, apart from our uh, cube falling out of space there, uh, let's set it to kinematic. There we go, right. So right now our cube rotates in every direction uh, and that's kind of not what I wanted because we want to just rotate it on one axis. Uh, so I'm going to remove that one. We'll put that to zero. Uh, let's try now. Okay, so it's rotating that way. And let's try that. No, maybe on the Z axis. Uh, ah, here we are. I'm going to ignore that one. We want to change it there, I think. Yeah, okay. So now that's uh, rotating the way that I want it to. Um, we might just want to invert the controls. So yeah, so when I swipe this way, that's actually doing up and down the screen. Um, let's try, let's try this one. A bit of a trial and error with this, just to get it set up how we would like. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm moving left and right here, and that's rotating the cube. Uh, screen Z. Yeah, okay, so there we are. This is how I want it. So I'm moving uh, left and right. So when I go left, the, you can see the cube rotating there as I move the mouse back and forward. Uh, the sensitivity, we might up that a little bit. Uh, this will all make sense in a minute uh, as we start to build out the game world. Right, so let's make that a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe that's that'll do for now. Right, uh, we're going to call this controller because that's in the middle there. And let's go ahead. And I want to build um, like a cube around it or some walls around it. So we'll take this and let's call that uh, walls. And we're going to reset the position of this. And we want to make these into kind of like long sticks. Let's see where we are. Uh, 0.5. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. 0.3. And let's go up a little bit longer on that one. Take this to the side. Uh, and let's bring, oh, let's add that too. Let's just bring that back to the center. Um, okay, we'll move that out. Um, I'm gonna make that a bit bigger, I think. Okay, that's looking good. Let's duplicate this and move it to the other side, minus three. We'll duplicate this one and we're gonna rotate this 90 degrees. Uh, let's see, in the right direction would help, 90 this way, that's it, set that to zero, and we're going to move that up, so that's a four, uh, 3.5, let's we'll leave it there for now, let's copy that one, pop that down here, minus 3.5, Okay, um, and what we want, we want these, um, ah, okay, hang on, let's check this out. Okay, yep, so our cube's rotating the wrong way now. Um, what we want, we want these to stick to the, uh, to be part of the controller. So what we can do is we can drag each one of these into the controller, and when the controller spins, oops, uh, or it will do if we just switch these to kinematic when the controller spins it will also 
spin the other objects. Okay, so we've got a bit more work to do because the controller is spinning the wrong way again, because uh, that's not, uh, not how I wanted it. Uh, so let's have a look. We are gonna just, let's try this. No, third time's lucky. Yeah, okay, so that's perfect, yeah. So now we're spinning that. Let's, uh, we're gonna zoom out a little bit so we can actually see what's going on. And what we could do here is we could change the camera to, rather than perspective, we'd change it to orthogonal and that will give us a head-on view of our game. Let's set that to zero, zero. Oops. Maybe not 93, where are we? Ah, that's... Yeah. Uh, let's try that. Yeah. All right, that's looking good. Um, so yeah, so we've roughly got that in the, there we are. You can see the camera there looking straight on. Um, all right, good. That's looking good. So let's add a, um, a sphere into this because this can be our character and this will all start to make sense as this comes together. Um, now this is the character. We want it to be dynamic. Let's drag it in and we'll get that at zero. That should be in line. Yeah, you can see that's in line there. The ball's a little bit big. Let's make it 0 0.5. Good. Yeah, so you can see now uh, the ball is staying there, but I don't, it could probably get knocked off course. Uh, so we might need to limit um, the axis of which that is on, uh, but we can get to that in a minute. Let's increase that size a little bit. No point. Ah. Annoyingly, that is, uh, if we just drag these out of here, and I'm gonna increase the controller size but it seems to be increasing everything, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, we probably could have gone into the model to increase it, but because uh, I've done it here, we're gonna, I'm just gonna do it like this. Uh, we'll drag those back in. Uh, so the controller, let's make, uh, let's make this kind of a red, because what I want to happen is I don't want the, you don't want the ball to touch this. Uh, But we want to be able to. Uh, we want to be able to. The ball has to touch these three things to make them uh, to light them up to make them green. So let's add an if collide. If collide and set color. Set color. That's kind of that's a. Okay, if collide, collision shape cube, if collide with the sphere. Yeah. I go green, perfect. Uh, however, if we want an if collide on this one, uh, this is the controller. Oh no, hang on. We want to put this, actually want to put this on the character. Uh, affected assets we are the character and if we collide with the controller and um, we want to do a, a debris explosion collide uh, now we need to add uh, we need an asset for the debris explosion so back to the 3d world let's add an asset we want a sphere Let's rename this one debris. Good. And then we can pick it in here. So we want the debris. Save that. Uh, 0.2, because we don't want it to be too big. So if we hit the uh, red, yeah, that'll explode. Perfect. Let's um, what do we want? We want uh, we want to remove the ball after it's been hit as well. 
so let's say if we and okay perfect now let's limit um, the position limiter uh, da, 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 da. let's actually let's um we'll get this on the debris oh, back here we'll get this the position limiter on the debris uh, and this will stop the balls from falling back and forward uh, so if we go to here and we want to keep them on the green uh, the green and blue plane we don't want them going back and forward um, so go back to debris the blue and green uh, so we just put zero on these two and then so when this explodes that is not that is a funky effect there that is uh, I'm not sure what's going on there um, uh, that's possibly the uh, that is probably the wrong axis um, we've got going on there so let's um, go to the camera uh, let's change that to perspective a minute and just see what's going on there this game's probably too easy because I can't hit the hit that uh, the blue and the green controller let's have a look um, ah because they are set to um, the minimum and maximum so we want to unbind these and give them zero so they can kind of move wherever wherever they need to in in that square so now yeah again okay. you notice how they all stay within the cube uh, unless they escape out the corner there um, rather than falling yeah out the either either edge okay um, so there you know there's lots of uh, this works great as a game mechanic and you could fully flesh this out and make an entire game out of this um, we can probably make it a little bit harder if we increase the bounce on here uh, maybe maybe 10 too much let's have a look at five there um, yeah it might make it harder to get around perfect you know and with this we could always add um, you know other other enemies that you need to uh, avoid so let's uh, if we add this cube I will call this enemy um, and if we drag this in oh, let's get out of the camera view uh, if we drag this in 0.4 0.4 uh, yep Now this could ob obviously be. Uh, uh, where are we? Purple there, uh, and let's just set this to affected asset. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's, I think there's, we could do a few things here. I mean, one, we could make this static. Um, and then, uh, where's our enemy? I think if we do this, up here let's just get this back on track right 
yes um i mean we could just do if collide uh, with an enemy that's going to do the same thing so uh, hopefully let's see if we can collide with that other static enemy there yes okay so that works so yes yeah, so um there, there's various things we could do here you know as a um, to make the game harder if we set this to dynamic um, if we set that to dynamic then yeah that's kind of like a a bit of an enemy in there with with the main player so i think this would this would probably make the game too hard but you get the idea you can kind of play around a lot with this and get the um get the get a good a good game mechanic and the and you kind of get to the next level if you manage to uh turn i think they're too bouncy now if you manage to turn all the all, all the uh all the sides green you know and you could uh have more complex shapes we could we could get rid of this you could you could get rid of the enemy in there um and duplicate these and kind of make it so you had to turn all of these uh, all of these green without uh, without the ball falling out uh, yeah so there's you know i think this opens up there's quite a lot of possibilities here for a uh, for a good game um, and while we're here let's why not let's drop in a plane I, mean, I think I'm going to wrap this up here uh, pretty much because we've we've kind of ex shown how the node uh, how the node the rotate node works. Uh, well, I'm just going to get this in there because I think this will be minus ninety because uh, we can give a bit of a bit of color if we give it give the game a background. You know, but I think that's the amazing thing about Buildbox is how quickly you can actually get some simple game mechanics going and have uh, have the basics of a game. Uh, we're off center. I don't know why that's. Let's get that back. Uh, have the basics of a of a game built pretty pretty quickly. Uh, let's give that a color. Uh, we get rid of those shadows they're a little bit nasty uh, they don't look too good so what we can do is we'll go into the 3d world the walls uh, and if you go into the walls there and pick the 3d model you can switch off uh, the cast shadows yeah that's looking better so very quickly there we've got the mechanics for a pretty fun game and i think this could really be expanded out and made into a, a full title and you know that's just it can be a casual game you can play this with one hand um, which is perfect all right that's about it for this one i hope you found it useful and you can download this project file from buildboxacademy.com and i will see you in the next one